guess where we are right now? <laughs> Uzbekistan has been um, a surprise. We really didn't, um, well, I personally didn't expect what I found. Tashkent is okay for half an hour half a day. Actually, I have to say to me, uh, a city in Asia is extremely clean and there's a lot of parks, so a lot of green around the presidential buildings. So it's good to relax. For our overnight accommodation in Tashkent, we decided to stay at the Hotel Uzbekistan. Maybe not the best in town, but definitely an iconic example of Soviet architecture. This is the Asti Imam complex, this is the old part of Tashkent and actually what is survived after the earthquake of 1966. We're getting lost. It's likely. some money and this is hundred dollars it's a massive city don't underestimate the distances and there's not really too much to see use it as a hub then move around we are at the train station and in about an hour we're going to take the train to go to summer camp Well, Samarkand is uh, well, obviously it's amazing. All the historical buildings are breathtaking. So this is a mosque that has been built in uh, honor of um, Timur's wife, Bibi. So uh, in the legend, it said that apparently when they were building the mosque, the architect actually fell in love with Bibi, and he demanded a kiss. We are in the middle of Samarkand in the Rajasthan Square, probably one of the most beautiful places in Asia, if not in the world. So on this specific madrasa there is a very interesting characteristic that is the actual representation of animals. So we have a tiger, we have a deer, and then we also have sun. Why is that impressive and um, different from the others? Is it because in the Islamic religion you do not tend to represent anything using symbols or anything? We've just been kind of like harassed by groups of locals that just want to take pictures with us and then they wanted our Facebook account, Instagram, email address, so it's any, anything, anything. This is Guri Amir Mausoleum, where, uh, where we can find uh, the tomb of Timur. It became the capital of the, of the Timur Empire. All the artists, all the architects and, and, and the best scientists of the, of the empire came here 
to build the city. And this is what we can see actually today, the best preserved buildings of Samarkand are actually dating from that age. The wall behind me uh, apparently has been built by the Ministry of Tourism to separate the main tourist attraction from the, from the poorest area, the residential area, just to make sure that tourists don't see what, what is inside. In two days we are in Samarkand. It was an interesting experience. It was quite clean. Everything was um, clearly divided within the, um, the actual market. But, yeah. and, we, um, and the good thing is that they let you try most of the stuff. So you go around there and it's like, oh, do you want to try this nut? Or do you want to try this cake? And then you can kind of like taste a bit of everything. Shai Zinda complex is uh, actually an ancient uh, cemetery. There's plenty of mausoleum and tombs. Uh, it's, the colors are just amazing. but we're not entirely sure which one is the train. So we just arrived in Bukhara and we're now starting exploring the city. Bukhara is one of the cities that we like the most and actually is one of the cities that had like a very important history because throughout like the expansions of the Islamic Empire it was one of the main cities um, together with Cordoba and also Baghdad full of like monuments it's a fantastic like center as well town center where everyone gathers in the evening and uh, we've been there for a day and a half that is probably not enough to actually enjoy everything that he has to offer The Arca Fortress is the old citadel of Bukhara and the residence of the Emir. For, uh, for centuries has been the, the, the main stronghold and a citadel with 3,000 people. Here we are now in the Coronation Hall, the place where the throne of the Emir was and where public audience were held. Abdullah Khan Madrasa and this is one of, well this is basically the only madrasa here that is not pointing towards the Mecca. This is Charmina and this is the only building in the whole Uzbekistan with this kind of like structure and some not really nice people tend to define it as an upturned chair. Let me introduce the Great Game. The word Great Game indicates the spy game that happened in the 19th century between Russia and the British Empire. Back then the British Empire was fearing 
that uh, the Russia expansion in Asia, in particular in Central Asia, would threaten his most important colonial domain, India. The entire region was like populated by spies. We are at the Zindan, this is the prison of Bukhara. Among others here in the middle of the 19th century, two Englishmen uh, were held and kept for more than three years. The two Englishmen were sent by the British um, to, to meet with the Emir of Bukhara to gather intelligence. Then he decided to kill the two Englishmen as spies. So we departed from Bukhara this morning and we are crossing the Kizilkum Desert. Our final destination is to see some fortress in the middle of it before going to Kiva tomorrow. So we're walking along the walls of the fortress. They are entirely made out of mud. Actually the fortress of the citadel apparently was built and was lying around the second, the third century. Перед вами то прокала, некогда столица древнего Халеза. Toprak means mud, while Kala means castle. Uh, where we are right now is the, is the ancient palace of the king. Um, actually, it was interesting because the religion back then was the Zoroastrism that effectively disappeared after, uh, after Islam um, came in the region. There are some difference in these wooden sticks, which are curved and much higher. The second big difference is that the central wooden structure is not is not sustained by the two big poles. Hiva right now and this is our last stop. Um, Hiva is probably the only city that has preserved its, uh, its buildings and its flair as well and um, so we are exploring it for today and the city is waking up and as you can see there are people preparing their goods to be sold to the tourists. We just bought a cumulative ticket uh, for the, all the main attraction of Kiva. So as you can see, we have a to-do list of 16 uh, monuments to see. I don't know how many madrasa we have seen, this is one of the many. Uh, actually madrasa were schools, but like, and they were like madrasas, elementary school, primary school, secondary school or college. 
actually said that uh, there are so many madrasa in Kiva as many college in Cambridge or Oxford. This is not me, I read it on the card. Definitely important in this region is the craftsmanship. We have seen artisans uh, working on wooden, um, <laughs> engraving metals, uh, producing textile and beautiful and beautiful uh, Susani, what they call here. Definitely something uh, typical of the region since uh, many, many, many centuries. 2 p.m. Kipa is the place to be. There are at least two weddings with giants on the street. the country where we have the best food we eat so much I'm talking about food it's definitely a good kind of like cuisine it's everything is meat yeah there's only the salad but and, but all, all the main courses even the soups they mainly um, they contain like meat or I'm going to make some dumpling We waited for almost 40 minutes, but uh, I think that the last monument of Kiva, maybe we will not manage to get it. That's unfortunately that we have the last one on our checklist. It really feels like we are back in the past. Everything around you is like, it's, yeah, it's, it's an amazing, impressive building and it's beautiful, it's just beautiful. No, it's an impressive town and it's really well preserved. The entire citadel is as it was back a century ago and, and that's remarkable. We just climbed on, uh, we just entered on the first madrasa that, that we found and then we found the stairs and we climbed up on the roof and now we are enjoying the sunset from the roof. <laughs> 